The reason that 90% of websites fail to reach their true potential is because of this. Get it wrong and the whole thing just becomes a tangled mess. But get it right and it's like giving your website ranking superpowers. By the end of this video, you'll realize that the reason your website isn't growing is because you haven't been looking at internal linking in the right way. We'll also look at a simple step-by-step -step system to fix or implement your internal linking strategy, just like these sites did here. It's been said that two well-placed internal links can be just as powerful, if not more powerful, than one external link. So there's a lot to gain from getting it right. And it's the one thing that we can do that's free and gives us quick results when it comes to improving those rankings. Now, the first thing we need to consider is our internal linking structure. And you might want to think about this as a pyramid or a family tree style setup. So typically our homepage is going to sit at the top of the family tree or pyramid and it's then going to feed into topical clusters. So for example, this, this site would be a home and garden type site. So from the home page, we're going to create a category or a hub page that is to do with the home or the house, and then we'll have one to do with the garden. And then we can start to create other hub pages that feed off each of these. Each piece of string represents an internal link and essentially what that's doing is it's allowing search engine bots to crawl from one page to another as easy as possible, both up and down the pyramid. And what that does is it means we're keeping the juice flowing all the way through the website from top to bottom, but also from bottom to top. So what would that look like in, in this example? Well, it might mean that we've got, if we look at these, this example here, We've got the home page, an internal link coming into the, the category house page. And then from here, we might link to our bathroom page, our kitchen page, a storage page, and a bedroom page. And then potentially some of these might link across too. So we might have a bedroom to storage. That might make sense. We probably wouldn't have a kitchen to bathroom, but you might have a kitchen to storage. I'm going to just join these two up because I haven't got a piece of string long enough. From our storage page, we might then link back to the home page. So we've got Juke, we've got link juice flowing from our home page to our house page into our kitchen page back to our storage and then back to the house and then we probably want another link from our house page that goes back to the home page so we've got one coming in and we've got one going out now of course we can take this one step further and continue our internal links down the chain so from kitchen we'd probably go to tea and coffee we'd probably go to kettle or what we might want to do, what might, what might make more sense is to link from kitchen to tea and coffee, but then link from tea and coffee to kettle. And then kettle might link back to kitchen. And again, we can see we've got this little loop here that's allowing this link juice to come back and flow back to the home page. And then you'd have exactly the same again for bathroom. You'd probably have another, we've kind of put these all together here in one little cluster. We'd then have bathroom and one little cluster here, storage and a little cluster and bedroom and a little cluster. And then on this side, it would be exactly the same again, but we're keeping everything topically relevant for the garden. So again, we'd have clusters of outdoor cooking, furniture, storage and tools. And then these things, barbecue, stoves, would probably fall under outdoor cooking. So we'd have some links here. It's a little one. <laughs> And plants would actually probably be another cluster up here and we'd have a link coming in here. And again, we just look for opportunities to cross link wherever possible, where it's relevant, and then feed back in at various points to the garden and have a link from our garden coming back to our home page. Now, of course, I need a bigger piece of string for this one. Probably also makes sense to put a link from house to garden and then we're, and, and maybe back again too, and then we're really keeping that juice flowing. Although it's not strictly necessary because we have got the flow here and we've got the flow here and it's all going to be shared at various points. So using that example there, we've 
pretty much covered structure and we've touched on topics and clusters. And really that is the key when it comes to internal linking. We don't just wanna be completely random in the things that we link out to. We need to make sure we keep things as topically relevant as we possibly can. So for example, we, you know, it would make sense to link from a kettle to tea. That would make sense. But we wouldn't want to link from a frying pan to a bathroom. Apart from anything else, I'm gonna need a lot of string for that. Now the next question is where to place your links. Now most themes will come with a set site architecture that is pretty much perfectly set up for simple internal linking. We're thinking about the main navigation, sidebars and the footer. And of course you are going to utilize those, but you should also be thinking about adding internal links to your content that's a little bit more contextual. And this really is how we start to build up that topical authority for our website. An important consideration that you do need to think about is anchor text. And the, my key piece of advice here is to think about the user first and foremost. So try not to use confusing language and don't worry about being too aggressive with either exact match or partial match anchor text in relation to your target keyword but definitely don't confuse them and use strange language like this, large cooling device for edible goods. No, we don't want that. Just something nice and simple that's gonna make sense for the user, but also help us meet our target keywords. So for example, if you were looking to rank for the term best fridges or best refrigerators, then refrigerator or fridge would be perfect as our anchor text. Now, if you've got an existing website, of course, you can go in and add a lot of internal links to your content, and that's really going to help. But one of the key times to add your internal links is when you create a new piece of content. So if you're publishing a brand new post or page, if you have some content on your website that is already relevant to that new piece of content, then linking from that existing piece of content to this new piece of content can be a real bonus because it's gonna help Google to crawl that page because they'll crawl, the bot will crawl from the existing page through to that new page and discover it. And of course, you're also adding that relevance. And if you've got links coming into that existing page, then you're also passing on that link juice. The easiest way to find the most relevant pages is to see what Google already sees as relevant. And a simple site colon search with your main keyword will help you find the most relevant pages. And then you can look to identify internal link opportunities on those pages back to this new page that you're about to publish. Another important question that we should ask is how many internal links should we place on any given page? Now, there is no magic number to answer this question, but just be aware that the more links you add to a page, the more you are diluting that link juice and power that is passing from one page to another. For me, I typically tend to go with around three to six as a maximum in terms of contextual in-content links. That's in addition to, of course, the, the main navigation, sidebar and footer links. If you want to check how many internal links you have on a page, there are various Chrome plugins that you can use for this, but both Rank Math and Yoast offer this functionality and most of you will prob probably be using one of those plugins and it's pretty quick and simple to identify how many links are on any given page using that. Another question that people ask is, should I do my internal linking manually or use a plugin or software to automate the process? Now my advice would be, unless you've got a huge e-commerce site, 
then you know for most bloggers and niche website owners with pages of you know between 50 and 253 400 pages it's not going to be too much of an onerous task to go in and add these links yourself if you do want to automate the process you can use a plugin called link whisper which is pretty much industry standard and it does a very good job link is in the description below but you probably don't really need it and like i say unless you're managing a huge portfolio of sites and you've never internal links before then you probably don't need to use it and just go in and have a play yourself now that you've got your internal links sorted make sure that you've got your external links firing on all cylinders and if you want to do that check that video over there guys thanks for watching and good luck with your projects oh man Ugh!